Hello all, my name is Krishnaik and welcome to my YouTube channel. We will continue the discussion with Python and we are going to see the first very very important library called as NumPy. Now since you know that in machine learning in the data analysis stage or uh, stage or the data exploration stage, right, we will be doing an extensive exploratory data analysis on different different kind of data. So NumPy library is basically one of the most important library which you will be frequently using. NumPy library is basically used for creating multi-dimensional arrays and it also has a lot of inbuilt functions which will help you to perform different different kinds of uh, you know array operations. So first of all let us just understand what exactly is a NumPy array. So here you can see it NumPy is a general purpose array processing package it provides a high performance multi-dimensional array objects and tools for working with this particular arrays okay and you should also understand one thing guys always make sure that you are using numpy because numpy has bindings of c++ libraries so whenever you have such kind of some kind of bindings of c and c++ libraries usually uh, the, the 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 operations usually takes place very very quickly uh, let it be the inbuilt function suppose you are trying to multiply two arrays you are trying to do different types of uh, operations within the arrays and remember guys most of the machine learning algorithms are all uh, different different mathematical calculations Okay, so it is very very important that you practice about NumPy and similarly after this video I will be also uploading a next video on Pandas. So that video will also be very very important. Okay, so let us begin. So initially to begin with guys, uh, first of all we will try to understand what is an array. Array is a data structure that stores value of same data type. Now in my previous video I have already discussed about list and we saw that in list you can have many items of different different data types. But an array, whenever you are storing anything, you should make sure that all the elements are of, of the same data type. So let us begin and try to understand how we can use NumPy library to create arrays. So first of all, to begin with guys, I have to import this NumPy library. Now before importing, suppose you have installed Python manually, right? So for that, if you want to install the NumPy library separately, so you just have to use this command that is called as pip install NumPy. And open your command prompt or, uh, and then you can basically type this. And suppose if you have also installed Anaconda uh, environment, in that case also and suppose NumPy is not installed, you can basically use this command that is conda install NumPy. Okay. So I hope I am pretty much clear regarding it. Now, let's go ahead and try to see how NumPy works. So always remember the first statement of NumPy is that you need to import this NumPy as a library. And once I am importing it, I am using an alias name which is called as np. Remember any operations that I need to, any inbuilt functions that I need to do within the NumPy, I can basically use this particular alias itself. Okay. So once I execute this, so this has got executed, you can see over here, now I have basically created a list. So this list, now I will just try to show you how we can create different different arrays, uh, how we can also create multiple nested arrays, you know, or multi-dimension arrays. First of all, we'll just start start with one-dimensional arrays, and then we'll also understand what is the difference between one-dimensional and two-dimensional arrays, and we'll also try to see different kind of properties. So to begin with, guys, let me consider that I have defined a list like this. Okay, I've used the square bracket brackets. I have basically defined all my elements one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm basically using np dot array. An array is an inbuilt function over here. You can see that if I press Shift tab before the brackets, you can basically see that it creates an array. And it creates an array based on the data type or based on the element that I am basically giving over here. So over here I am basically giving a list. So as soon as I give a list, this will get converted into an array. So let us just execute it. Now I want to see the type of this particular array. I can basically use the uh, type function which is again to check the data type. So to begin with, if I execute this, you can see that over here we are getting numpy.n-dimensional array. But you should understand one thing guys. Now let me just print this array okay or without printing I'll just uh, write down what I'll try to see what is the output of this particular array value you can see that it is basically an array and remember guys this is a one dimensional array okay why I'm saying you have one dimensional arrays and uh, first of all when I displayed this in my output cons console you can see that I have one bracket as opening and the one bracket as closing right so this basically means that it is a one dimension and again, just by visually, you should not believe it. You can basically also use an inbuilt function called as dot shape. Now, dot shape actually helps you to specify that how many number of rows and how many number of columns are there. If you have a one dimension array, it will just say you that how many number of elements are present inside this. So if I do this, and if I basically execute it, 
since it is a one dimensional array i will be basically getting 5 comma blank this is how a one dimensional array is basically represented now you may be also thinking can i convert this into a two dimensional array yes you can basically convert that into a two dimensional array so for this what i'll do is that i'm going to use an inbuilt function called as reshape now inside reshape you basically have to provide some values okay like how many number of rows or how many number of columns are there but before you know reshaping into a two dimensional array first of all let us create a two dimensional array manually so for that what i'll do is that i'll create three lists so i have list one list two list three so i have created three lists i'll try to convert this list into an array and in order to convert it i'll just use np.array and inside this i'll give all the list values my list one my list two and my list so as soon as i execute this you can see that my array value will be having like this now you observe this guys guys since i have actually given into my array multiple lists this is basically considering it is creating a two dimensional array over here this all lines that you see this is my row one this is my row two this is my row three similarly this is my column one column two column three column four column five so over here you can see that if I go and try to see the shape of this particular array, which is again a two dimension. Now, how do I identify usually whether it is a two dimension or not? Remember guys, in single dimension, you just had one opening bracket and one closing bracket. But in two dimension, you'll be having two opening bracket and two closing bracket. This is a way, again, it should not exactly this particular bracket is getting closed, okay, over here itself. But I'm just saying that Always remember in two dimensions, you'll be having two brackets like this open and two brackets like this close. If you have three dimensions, then there, there will be like three brackets in the opening and three brackets in the closing. Okay. Now you should understand how do I see the size of this particular array? Because I can just manually see how many elements are there in the array, right? So over here, you, if you count uh, five per row, that basically means 15 elements are there, right? So if I use array.shape, this is basically going to show me three rows and five columns. Always remember the first attribute in a two dimensional array is always your rows and five basically columns you have in a two dimensional array. And most of the scenarios, most of the exploratory data analysis, you will be working in a two dimensional array. Okay. And where suppose you will be having a lot of features, you will be having a lot of rows that can basically be converted finally into an array and then applied to a machine learning algorithm. The reason we are basically using arrays is that guys, arrays operation are very, very fast. So whenever I convert my whole data set, right, into an array, okay, after doing all the feature engineering, feature selection, and many process, what will happen is that I can take that data, apply it to my machine learning algorithm, such that my training usually takes up quickly, right? So because of that, we'll be using extensively arrays. So you'll be seeing in the future classes where I'll be doing about exploratory data analysis, over there we'll be extensively discussing about it. Now what I want to show you is that after finding the shape of this particular array, I have got that it is 3 comma 5. But now can I change the shape of this particular array? I know the total number of elements is 15, right? Now what I can do is that there is again an inbuilt function which is called as a reshape. Now reshape basically helps you to reshape the array, okay? Return an array containing the same data with a new shape. But always remember one thing in this guys, the number of elements present over here and whenever I'm reshaping, right, suppose I have reshaped, initially my shape is 3 comma 5, right? Now if I'm reshaping it to 5 comma 3, the total number of elements will be same because 5 into 3 is 15. This 5 comma 3 basically indicates now I'll have 5 rows and 3 columns, okay? So when I'm reshaping also, it'll, you have to make sure that the total count of this element should be 15. Over here you can see that it is 15. Now I can reshape these elements and actually create a new array with a different shape but make sure always the number of elements should be equal so if i am executing this array dot reshape 5 comma 3 you can see that all I'm, I'm basically getting five rows and three columns what if if i make 5 comma 4 now understand guys if i make 5 comma 4 the total number of elements will be 20 right if i execute this cannot reshape array of size 15 into shape 5 comma 4 this is the array uh, error that we are basically getting this is very very important uh, to understand okay so make sure that you always have the same count of the number i can also convert this into one row and 15 elements so this is nothing but it will actually show me uh, 15 different elements right so this is how uh, and this is just shown in one one row and again guys this is a two dimensional don't think that it is 
one dimension okay two dimension uh let us go ahead and try to understand see and always remember guys whenever you learn about any data structure you learn about arrays you learn about data frames you should first know that how you can retrieve the data inside so for that we basically use indexing we have also discussed indexing in dictionaries we have discussed in list in tuples and sets right so here also it is very very important to understand how we perform indexing in numpy array so let us go ahead and try to understand it so first of all this is my array right so i'm, I'm just going to reshape this uh, to something else let's see. or uh, what i can do is that i can i can basically create one simple uh, array so i'll just say that arr is equal to np dot array and uh, here what i can do is that i can create a list right so this is my list okay let me just execute it now if i am trying to read the index of 3 again guys in array whenever you are creating an array the index starts from 0 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay so always remember that so whenever you are using indexes make sure that you have indexes like 0 1 2 3 4 i mean by default 0 1 2 3 4 but if you want to retrieve any value just find out what is the index of that value suppose i want to retrieve 4 i know the fourth index is 3 right 0 1 2 3 so once i you execute this you will be able to retrieve that particular element this is with respect to one dimension with respect to two dimension i'm going to use the same example of this particular array and uh, i'm going to execute it over here i understand as i so said you that in an array you have two important components in the shape. in the uh, in the shape you basically have two important components one is the row index and the other one is basically the column index so the row index basically indicates that this particular row is my first row so this row index is 0 this row index is 1 this row index is 2 similarly in column this is my zeroth index first index two second third okay so so many indexes are present so what i'll do is that first of all i'll just show you how indexing can be done in uh, two dimension array and as i said you guys first of all just put a comma okay on the left hand side you are basically providing the information about which row index you want suppose if i give colon that basically means it is going to pick up all the row indexes if i go to the right and uh, press colon then that basically means it is going to retrieve all the column indexes so once i execute this you can see that even though i have used this kind of indexing technique it is picking up all the elements right now let us go ahead and play with it. Now, suppose i want to pick up 1 2 and 2 3 only this many elements from this particular array now let us see how it can be done okay first of all what i'll do is that i will try to find out which rows i want okay which rows i want in this i want the zeroth row and first row so what i'll do is that i'll say zero colon and 2 i'll say know that i need only till first right if i give zero colon 2 that is basically saying that until the second index in the row i'm going to pick up all the rows in short okay so over here you can execute and see so yes i'm exactly getting the first and the second row which is which is basically present in my zero and the first index on the right hand side what i can do is that i just want the first and the second column so again i can basically use the same thing that is zero colon 2 executed you can see that i'm having this value 0 1 2 3 so pretty much simple pretty much easy now similarly suppose i want to pick up 5 6 8 9 let us see how we can do so if i want to pick up 5 6 8 9 so remember 5 6 8 9 is present in which row, row index again from 1 and 2 right so what i can do is that i can basically say one colon comma now this is basically my row part what about my column part in my column part i am basically going to use 0 1 2 3 4 so 3 and 4 indexes is required so i'll use 3 colon and i'll execute it now you can see why i am getting 5 6 8 now pretty much simple pretty much easy and uh, pretty much uh, you know and again there will be some confusion guys you just have to practice so one assignment for you all with that try to pick up 4 5 6 8 and after that try to pick up 3 4 5 element okay 4 5 6 8 and 3 4 and let me know in the comment box uh, like what will be the value of it or how will be the code of it okay now i'm going to discuss and this is all about indexing guys uh, again there are different ways of indexing again uh, before indexing i also wanted to uh, teach you some some inbuilt functions that are present in numpy so first one of the inbuilt function is called as arrange okay so if i press shift tab in arrange you can see that i'm having three parameters one is start stop and step arrange basically creates a one dimensional array 
and the range will be taken between zero i mean uh, between a lower value and the higher value that basically means that if i'm giving this particular value and saying that okay use np dot arrange and i have given my lower value as 0 and 10 that basically means between 0 to 10 all the elements will be picked up here you can basically see that this is what is my array that is getting now you should also understand there was one more additional parameter called as step now here step if i used 2 that basically means it is going to take a step gap of two. you can see over here once i execute it and once i see my array See, after 0, it is picking up 2, then 4, 6, 8, until 10, okay? This is a basic functionality of uh, arrange. Again, there is an inbuilt function called as lin space. I'm going to show you that also. So, here you can basically see what uh, what is exactly a lin space. So, np dot lin space, if I press shift tab, here you can see that, uh, again, the definition is pretty much clear. It is saying that between start and stop value, how many number of points you basically want and this is our equally divided points okay so always remember that guys suppose i say okay i want from 1 to 10 i want 50 points if i execute it you can see that this is my value that i'm getting and these are very uh, equally spaced points okay guys pretty much simple again in space uh, again why do we use it uh, sometimes uh, in deep learning and all you know we need to uh, we need to select some of the points quickly and uh, we need to initialize some of the points to play so that it can be very, very helpful. And at that time, you can basically use arrays, okay? Now, one more thing, uh, one, one very, very important thing that I want to discuss is something about copy function. I'm just going to uh, write a quote over here saying as copy function. Okay. Now, let us see what does a copy function. Uh, first of all, I'll just uh, define this particular array, okay? So, this is my array that I have actually seen. Now, let me just print, uh, I'll print this array over here. Now, what I'll do is that in this array element, I'll say that from the third index to all the indexes replaced by 100. Okay. So, I'll execute it. Now, if you go and see my ARR, you can see that I'm having all the values and all the elements are replaced by 100. Perfectly fine. This is also called as broadcasting. Okay. So, copy function and broadcasting. Let's write it down. So, copy function and broadcasting. This is pretty much simple and I hope you also know it. Now, what I'll do is that I will try to, uh, you know, take a copy of this array and replace it in ARR1. So, I'm basically assigning this array to ARR1. Okay. So, I'll execute it. Now, after this, what I'll do is that for AR1, I will also do the same thing. From the third index till the end, I'm going to replace it with 500. Previously in ARR, I replaced with 100. Here, I'm replacing with 500. So, once I execute it, here you can see that all the elements has been replaced with 500. Now, if I go back and check this array element, you will be seeing that this replacement of 500 has updated this array also. And uh, this is uh, what is basically called as a reference type. Array is actually a reference type and you should also know, understand the difference between reference type and value type. A value type can be an integer value. Suppose I have a a uh, list of integers i want to assign it to some or if i have an integer variable i want to assign it to something else right at that time if we have a value type this kind of updation will not happen from where i have actually copied but I, in the case of reference type they are sharing the same memory so what will happen is that any operation you do it on one variable it will also impact the memory of the other variable so in short you can understand that i have to i have a single memory cell where two variables are stored any update on one variable will replicate that particular value in that particular memory itself. So, in order to prevent this, we have something called as copy function. Okay. So, I can use like array.copy and I'll assign it to array1. So, once I execute it and after this, I'll say that print array. Okay. I want to print array first of all. And I know in my array, it is 500 elements are present in everything after third index. Then I'll say that, okay, array of 1 from 3 colon, I'm going to replace it by 1000. And then I'll print array1. So once I executed, you can see over here, guys, all the array elements were initially 500. Okay. Okay. I replaced my array one elements from third index. You can now see that I'm basically having all the elements over here. Okay? And this is actually, you know, nothing, no changes have actually happened. Now, what this exactly the copy is doing, it is creating an another memory space to store the value of ARR1. Okay. 
okay it is not being shared from the same memory location pretty much simple okay i hope you understood this you should understand some of this because whenever you are writing exploratory data analysis you are writing big big codes this type of scenario you may face okay now the next thing is that some conditions very useful in exploratory data analysis so what are the different types of conditions that you can use so first of all let me just write it down like this okay so i have defined a variable called as val is equal to 2 i just say array is less than 2 here you can see that what it is doing first of all it will go and check for each and every element which all element is less than 2 that element only will be coming as true remaining all will be coming as false okay very very much simple Similarly, you can also do different kind of operations like multiplied by 2. Let's say multiplied by 2. Here you can see that all the elements has been multiplied by 2. And remember in array, all the elements are 500 over here. Okay? You can also do a division saying as divided by 2. So how it is happening? For each and every element, this process is basically taking. Okay? You can also use modulus 2. And all the different kind of arrays, uh, it will basically happen. Now, Remember, if I write less than 2, okay, I'm just getting true and false. But I need the exact elements, right? I need the exact elements which are less than 2, right? Or values which are less than 2. I can just put this condition inside a square braces on that particular array itself. Now, here you can see that only one element is less than 2. Suppose if I say is less than uh, 600 or is less than 300, suppose. Here you can see that all my elements that are less than 300 is getting displayed. And uh, this is what is, and again, you can also write multiple conditions inside this uh, square braces itself. Okay. I've also discussed about reshape, guys. Make sure you practice this. Okay. Arrange, you can basically use for quickly creating some arrays. Um, and okay, there were some more inbuilt functions that I wanted to discuss. One is about np.ones. Okay. So let me just show you. So np.ones actually creates an array where all the elements are basically replaced by one. So here you can see that I've given one value like four. So it is basically replacing four ones. I mean, it is basically creating four ones in that particular array. Similarly, you can also give values like this. And uh, you may be thinking why this is one dot. Guys, there is also one more parameter in np dot ones. If I see over here, which is called as D type. By default, the D type is float. Okay. So, but if I want to fix it to integer, I can do it. And this is how my integer value looks like. Similarly, I can convert this into float also, not a problem. But make sure that uh, you can also give two dimensional arrays over here. So I have 2, 5, right? 2, 5 of np.1s, that basically means two rows and five columns. Pretty much simple. Some more inbuilt function, uh, which is called as random distribution, and this is present inside np.random.rand. Okay, if we go and see the function on this, it will select some random values of this given shape, whatever shape we are basically giving. If you give 3 cross 3, that basically means 3 rows and 3 columns. And uh, here you can basically see that create an array of the given shape and populate it with random samples from a uniform distribution 0, 1. So whatever random sampling it is doing, all the elements will be selected between 0 to 1. Okay, 0 to 1. It will not be less than 0 or not, it will not be greater than 1. That is what a uniform distribution says. Okay, by default, you can select different different values also. But in this case, by default, it is taking between 0 to 1. Similarly, there is one more function called as randn. Uh, in randn, it is basically showing you that it will select the random variable based on standard normal distribution. If you don't know about standard normal distribution, guys, please, I would suggest you go and watch my statistics playlist. Uh, link will basically be given in the description. So over here, uh, in randn, I'm basically saying that, okay, consider a flow cross flow, but make sure that this is a standard normal distribution. Once I execute it, these are my elements that I got selected. And always remember, guys, this random distribution that I'm selecting, if I execute it each and every time, the elements will change because it is randomly selecting it. Okay. So here also, similarly for this random distribution. Now, what I do is that uh, since this is of a random distribution, okay, what I did is that uh, I basically created a data frame and with the help of Seaborn, I have populated this diagram. Okay. I'll just show you. Again, don't worry about what is this Seaborn and all. I'll, I have a separate uh, lecture class later on, uh, which I'll be explaining about Seaborn, how, what are the different functions we'll be looking into Seaborn. We'll be also discussing about Matplotlib. Okay. For right now, we are basically, 
uh, PD dot data frame. So import. I'm going to use pandas also because pandas are required. Again, uh, pandas will be covered in the next class. I just want to show you one example because I have actually uh, selected this as my uh, standard normal distribution. And if I'm trying to populate it, you can see that we are getting a bell curve. This is one of the property of a Gaussian distribution. Yes, the bell curve is not exactly right, exactly perfect, but I'll be explaining you about this a lot. Uh, but this is just uh, uh, since I've actually selected a sample of a standard normal distribution, I wanted this particular diagram to be seen. Okay. And there is also one more inbuilt function called as randint. In randint, you can basically select uh, and in this you will be providing an integer values right higher integer values so suppose i provide low as 0 high as 100 then between 0 to 100 select eight numbers okay eight numbers that is what i have actually seen so once i execute it you can see over here i'm selecting eight numbers between 0 to 100 so every time it will change every time it will change and again you can reshape this into whatever you want okay so suppose this is 8 so i'll try 2 comma 4 so here it is two rows and four columns. Uh, one more is random sample. Random sample, again, uh, it will help you to select a random sample. Return random floats in the open interval between 0 0.0 and 1.0. Pretty much simple. Again, one and again, inside this, you can also provide shapes. So this was all about this particular video is about NumPy, guys. Again, you need to practice a lot of things. There are other, other inbuilt functions. And again, this is just not the end because as I go with uh, pandas also, there also I'll be using NumPy. I will try to discuss more about it. So I hope you like this particular video. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel. If you are not already subscribed, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one and all.